How's it everybody? My name is Andre Vaden and I am a Christian biker living in the Middle East. My mission is to disciple men to have a daily word and prayer time and to inspire you to return to the old school values of honor, respect, loyalty, chivalry and love. This is your weekly vitamin. Today we take our reading from James 4, verse 11 to 17. Do not speak against one another, brethren. He who speaks against a brother and judges a brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you who judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say, today and tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills it, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. In verse 11 here, we see James saying, don't speak out against each other. The KJV actually says, don't speak evil. The speak evil here translates the ancient Greek word katalalia. Katalalia is the sin of those who meet in corners and gather in little groups and pass on confidential information which destroys the good name of those who are not there to defend themselves. Two things are wrong here. Firstly, the ones speaking evil are breaking the commandment that we love one another. And secondly, they are assuming a judgment that is God's alone. Why is this important or relevant today? When we step up to, to our calling of making disciples of all nations, we need the support of our brothers in Christ. And we, and we need to support those who are doing their part. We need to approach this momentous task with the Lord in front of us and our fellow workers beside us. James is admonishing the readers to remember to not badmouth fellow workers in Christ. When we speak evil against brothers in Christ, we are breaking the commandment to love one another as ourselves. We are also speaking against the law, and indeed we are mocking the lawgiver. We are standing in rebellion, which we all know is sin. In speaking against fellow, fellow Christians, or when judging them, we are setting ourselves up as judge. And there is only one perfect judge, the lawgiver, God himself. Only he is able to save and to destroy. Judging others and speaking out against them makes us judges of the law and not doers of the law. If we do not follow the law, we are in effect telling people we place no real value in that law. We see ourselves as equal to the lawgiver. Even as we are under grace and our sins are forgiven, we still need to follow the moral law. We must not place ourselves level with or above God. Only God is omnipotent and all-knowing. In the following verses, James warns the reader not to assume that they know what will happen tomorrow. Just as today, we have no idea what will happen next. Anything can happen. I mean, who thought in January of this year that the whole world would lock itself down? Who would ever have imagined that countries would close their borders? Who would ever have imagined we would no longer see 
contrails of aircraft in the sky. I know, however, that this did not surprise God. This did not happen outside of God's will. He allowed this to happen for His own purposes. And we may never know why. God's ways are so much higher than our own. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 tells us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Our lives are like mist or vapor, here for a brief while and then gone. We need to realize that everything happens as per God's will. Instead of presuming that we, what will happen, we should make our plans and then give them to God, saying, God willing, we will do this. And if it is in God's will, He will smooth the path forward. If it's not in His will, it will not happen. In Proverbs 16, verse 3, we are told to commit our work to the Lord and He will establish our plans. So we do not know what the future holds. And if we do not know what it holds, how can we boast about it? If we boast in our arrogance, thinking we know what will happen, that our plans will succeed, we are sinning. The text says we are doing evil. And I don't know about you, but I love the Lord and I do not want to do evil. I would rather imitate Jesus. In John 3 verses 9 and 10, we are introduced to a character called Diotrephes. He wants to hinder the work of the laborers in God's kingdom because they are not doing it his way. He seems to want to control how the harvest is gathered. I'll read them here. I wrote something to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first among them, does not accept what we say. For this reason, if I come, I will call attention to his deeds, which he has done, unjustly accusing us with wicked words. And not satisfied with this, he himself does not receive the brethren either. He forbids those who desire to do so and puts them out of the church. He, John was going to out the plans of this man. In verse 11 we are told, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. The one who does good is of God. The one who does evil has not seen God. So how do we apply this? I see three principles we need to apply from this text. Firstly, work together for the good of God's kingdom. We need to build each other up and encourage each other. Stand shoulder to shoulder in the fight against the enemy. Help each other to snatch souls from the gates of hell. The harvest is plentiful. Let us gather as many as we can, together. Secondly, let's not presume to know what the future holds. Let us commit our work to God and He will establish our plans. We are doing His work under His guidance not our own. And thirdly, let's not be arrogant. If we boast, let it be our own weakness so that God is, is glorified. As the, as the psalmist says in Psalm 34, verse 2, My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. So let us do the right thing, we who know what is right. If we, not do, if we do not do this, we are doing sin. Let us forge forward and labor in God's kingdom, under His guidance and in His Holy Spirit. Let us stand in the breach for those who do not yet know what is the right path, what is truth, what is the way to eternal life. We know that way. We know that truth. We know that path. And it is Jesus, Jesus Christ, who died for us and who lived so we could live for him.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.